I'm Glenn McGinnis, and this is Outburst. This week, has a higher vaccination rate made you less concerned about social distancing? You know, we're not uh, as cautious anymore. Even with the higher vaccination rates, there's still a possibility. It depends on the concern. The vaccine don't prevent from getting it and giving it. But first, the discovery of the remains of 215 children buried on the grounds of a residential school in Kamloops, BC, has certainly been a shock. And now the search for answers begins. The residential school system and its alleged practices in the past has become a stain on this country's history. Many people are also calling for an apology from the Catholic Church for its alleged involvement in abuses at these residential schools. One of the calls of action put forth by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So we took to the streets in different areas across the country, including Kamloops, to find out what the government should do next. Our question. How should Canada respond to the discovery of remains at a former residential school? It was a wrong that the, the colonial people, and not even that far back, um, were, you know, and so I, I really do believe they need to make it right. But I also believe that the church played a huge part, part in this, and I really believe that the Indigenous should do a class action lawsuit against them. So that's sort of my opinion of with that. I, but I do believe that they need to be supported. There should be more education about the history of what happened to First Nations across Canada for the last hundred years or more. So I think that's really crucial. Like when I went to school, there was absolutely no historical education at all. You know, I've had to educate myself and I'll continue to do that. I feel the government and the church should step up and pay for the excavation of all the graves and the identification and the replacement of all of them. Well, they need to dignify those people. They need to name them, as, I've, as we're saying. Um, we need to never forget. And, you know, we can't erase our past, but we have to acknowledge it and just respect respect those those children and talk about it more get the conversation going and get get all this racism dealt with <laughs> i don't know it's 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 a generational thing it's not just something that's going to be fixed overnight but we need to start working on it it went all the way to the pope and the pope really didn't address it very well i don't think and um, the Catholic Church is looking frowned upon right now because they were running the schools at that time. So um, I, I think that they need to step up and really um, contribute finance, finances towards um, fixing all this, or at least finding an end, an end like a, a closure, closure for families. My great grandmother was a Métis, so I do have some small amount. Um, I think they're, they're, the government is, is, really needs to look into all the residential schools and they need to provide the funding to look into the, all these residential schools because there's been a really bad adjust here and the Catholic Church is, has really dropped the ball on this, like horrendous, absolutely horrendous. They're, they're not stepping up and, and doing anything about it. They, it's, it's not even close to being an apology and it, it's nowhere close to even putting a band-aid on what they've done. The biggest problem is that so much has been lost because we've seen uh, that they've actually expunged information about the uh, residential schools and things like that. And um, it is difficult to say that exactly the nuns and priests who were involved in that if they had diaries to provide that information so maybe we can see uh, more of a history because I myself truly believe that um, the Catholic Church as a, an organization is very thorough so I really don't believe that that's where the um, lack of information came from and as uh, the one report had said 
it was Indian Affairs that decided to expunge it because it was a waste of paper. So if that information is correct, that is truly tragic. So there's something very, very wrong. However, we must also put it in context. This was, I don't know the information of how these young children died. I suspect a lot of it had to do with disease and uh, TB, from what I hear. Um, I don't think any of them were actually killed as such, but they were certainly vulnerable and they were not kept in, in conditions that were safe for them in terms of TB, especially in th those days. I don't know the dates when that happened. Uh, there's going to be an inquiry, and once the inquiry comes out and we get the for, for further inf information, then I would decide on that new information what my opinion and my point of view of what happened took place. But I'm very pleased to hear that the Aboriginal people are standing up. I think we need to hold our elected leaders more um, accountable for reconciliation. I think we have uh, a lot of priorities and in 2021 the fact that we have people still living under long-term boil water advisories is quite a shame. Oh well um, there's so much that they can do I mean the uh, truth and reconciliation um, at call to calls to action the 94 calls to action there's a lot of information there uh, they shouldn't be putting together committees asking what they should do they should be reviewing what indigenous people have already been saying about the issue they should be listening they should be retroactively listening they should be looking at recompensation mental health services for people who have been struggling with this for decades um, and just looking at ways to use policy to ease the pressure off of the lives of survivors and their descendants. We need to search all those residential schools. We need to find, we need to do a lot more research into this and we need to give some sort of, God, I can't even say comfort or anything because there's no comfort in it, but we need to do something to give all those families some sort of Closure. be able to put it at peace yeah closure that's the word i was looking for um but definitely they need to search all the other residential schools because there wasn't just one right so i think it's time for them to um to acknowledge all the harms that they perpetuated i think the federal government needs to put pressure on the church yeah um in terms of government response the truth and reconciliation commission report um, came out quite a while back and many of the calls to action haven't been addressed and I think that the government should be addressing those calls to action. They're very clear with what's needed. Um, I mean I think it was 2009 that the TRC requested um, f additional funding to find if there are um, more bodies um, at these locations and they weren't given adequate funding. It's history, it's happened uh, you can apologize all you want, but it's not going to change the situation. About the impact that it's made on them, I think reaching out to it, like the people who are the survivors and the ones affected um, is what we really should be doing to see what they think is best for their own healing process and also taking space, um, like taking time to remember and reflect on the atrocities that have happened and moving forward, making sure we don't make those mistakes again. I think they have to look at what's you know, what we have done as a country. Canada has always put itself forward as a, as a great nation. And, and this is something that we haven't done right at all. And uh, it's horrible what's happened. Um, How do you think they should respond to it? They, they have to, I know, I, I've got, I can't do this. What has been considered a slow vaccine rollout has now gained some steam. Canada now leads most G7 countries in first vaccinations administered, although we're still lagging behind on the second dose. But conversely, this progress seems to have lowered the amount of new cases across the country. Combined with the warm summer weather, some Canadians may be letting their guard down. So, has a COVID-19 vaccine eroded your trepidation about staying six feet or two meters apart? Our question. Has a higher vaccination rate made you less concerned about social distancing? It depends on the concern. Like now that I know that most people have their first vaccination, I still think it's important to maintain social distancing just because we're not really sure yet what the 
um, averages for how, um, how, how the vaccine will work, whether or not there are other variants that are going to be coming in that are at play. Um, I think maybe once everyone has a second vaccination or most people have a second vaccination, then I would kind of reframe my thinking at that time. I just I don't have enough data right now to make up my mind. So I'm still going to be cautious to a certain degree. I think with uh, friends and family that uh, I know they've gotten the shot as well. Um, I think for me, it's a mitigating factor in terms of uh, a risk, I would say. Okay, and how about you? I'd say it's probably about the same because you could still catch COVID with the vaccine. You're just less likely to catch it and less likely to die. So, <laughs> I mean, still equally as concerned, but I don't know, minimally less. Well, as far as I know, like the the vaccine don't prevent from getting it and giving it, right? So all the vaccine does in my knowledge is uh, you get the vaccine, the two dose, you're pretty much download guaranteed that you won't die. But other than that, it's uh, I know they're looking in Israel to see if they uh, if it does uh, reduce the propagation, but I'm not sure we have an answer yet. A little bit, yeah. Uh, I at least feel safer about myself and like the people I care about I know are vaccinated, so I feel like everyone that I know is less at risk. Um, obviously, there's still the anti-vaxxers, but I don't... They're putting their own health at risk, you know? So I'm vaccinated, he got his first one, so, you know, we feel a lot safer now being outside and around other people. The vaccination rates, to me, it's not so much how high they are, it's which ones they are, and I think, frankly, our, our uh, criteria should be based on second rates, not, not just the first rate. Well, it certainly has within my own family and friends. Um, most everybody I know has had at least one vaccine, and many of us senior folk have had two. So amongst ourselves, you know, we're not uh, as cautious anymore. We feel much more comfortable together. But people I don't know, I keep my distance still. Not quite yet, because we not a lot of people have had their second dose. So I'm still kind of like concerned about it and trying to social distance and wear masks and stuff. So follow all the rules. I think until we reach about 70 to 80 percent of the overall rates and have most of our people having a second injection, I'm not going to really relax. I'm still, I have my mask and I'm going to keep using it. Uh, not really, no, it, 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 it hasn't changed. We're still distancing as best we can. Well, I, I think people should still social distance, but since most people are, the majority are now vaccinated, I think it's less of a concern than it was, you know, two or three months ago. I wouldn't say less concerned. I, I feel like I still follow social distance rules and everything. Um, but I guess it's kind of like eased my anxiety around everything. Not until we have basically 90% vaccinated will I feel comfortable with social distancing. Yeah, it's made me less concerned. I'm definitely like still concerned about it, but definitely less. No, it hasn't. Um, I, cause I think social distancing is one of the main, um, stop stoppers for the coronavirus. I, I, so I, even with the higher vaccination rates, there's still a possibility. So I, I believe that social distancing is very important. Yeah, actually, like I, I'd say it has, it's definitely like, I don't know. It just, it, it's nice to see that a lot more people are starting to feel like they can get vaccinated and they can feel safe with a vaccination and I felt I feel like a lot of my friends are able to start hanging out with me more now that I've been vaccinated and they've been vaccinated. No not really because recently I had a family member get it after they've got the vaccine and it doesn't make sense because I thought that protects you so no I don't think so. No because I think that uh, it's important that we do get vaccinated, but I think that complacency will cause us a problem. No, I've uh, socially distancing with everybody and everything, um, regardless of how many death rates there are, just because it's for my own safety and for other people's safety too. Well, I think eventually we'll, a whole bunch more of us will be safer to be around.
what interesting historical fact is shared by Pierre Trudeau, Brian Mulroney, and John Turner. They're all from Quebec. They were all prime ministers in the same year, or they all have the same birthday. So all from Quebec, all prime ministers in the same year or same birthday. Um, same birthday? I want to say all from Quebec. I'll go birthday. All from Quebec would be my best guess. Same year? I think it's same birthday. I don't know what the answer is, but I'm gonna assume maybe uh, A, that they're all from Quebec? Yeah, all the same year, I guess, yeah. You're absolutely correct, sir. Yeah, you got it right. 1984 was a tumultuous year in Canadian political history where the country ended up with three prime ministers. In February, Pierre Trudeau announced that he would not continue to lead the Liberal Party in the next election. In June, John Turner won the leadership of the Liberal Party and became Prime Minister. But Turner called an election only nine days after being sworn into office. In the September general election, the Liberals lost to Brian Mulroney and the Progressive Conservatives by a landslide. Mulroney would serve as Prime Minister for another nine years. This third wave has been a trying time for many Canadians as restrictions have been put in place, then lifted, then reinstated. But as of late, many jurisdictions in this country have been lifting restrictions once again, as many of us remain hopeful that we can finally get ahead of COVID. More than a year into this, many Canadians are eager to regain the liberty to travel or even socialize. But new variants still remain a threat and a fourth wave is never fully counted out. So, are we getting ahead of ourselves when it comes to loosening the rules? Our question. Are pandemic restrictions being relaxed too soon? Overall, I think the government's got to balance both business interests and people's perception of their rights. Right now, I think they've struck a reasonable balance and I would like to see them continue with relaxation as long as we hit appropriate milestones. You know, we're not quite out of the, the woods yet and, you know, we've, we've loosened them up maybe a little bit too soon before and we know what happens then. I think for consistency's sake, it would probably be good to just keep things going. I don't know. I feel like sometimes they are. I would, I would have preferred like everything be based on a second dose rather than a first, but I'm not a scientist and I'm not a medical personnel, so I'm not the one making those decisions. Potentially a tiny bit, uh, possibly. Uh, but what a complex situation. What an unbelievable turmoil. Just everybody, everywhere trying to figure out what's going on. We could always do... We could have had the whole pandemic over in two weeks if everyone had stayed home at the same time. So I, I just don't want to see us have another wave and then have to shut everything down again because you know, businesses can't handle it, but also everyone's mental health can't handle another lockdown. So I want to do whatever is prudent. Uh, no, I think it's about uh, right. I think uh, cases are coming down. Uh, vaccination levels are coming up, so I think it's good. And as far as patios go, I'm all for sitting out on a patio now and uh, small groups of people outside is okay by me. Well, I think rather than saying we need 70% of the people with their first shot, maybe what we really need is 50 or 60% of the people with two shots. And there's still people dying just about every day. So, yeah, it, it's, I, I think they need to really look at how fast they are going to let things go. No, I'm kind of tired of all the restrictions. We're, I'm, but I'm lucky I'm one of the people who can live pretty self-isolated and... Um, you know, I live by myself, so I can just go home and self-isolate pretty easily. I don't really know, like, I want them to, like, get raised, but it could be too soon, it could not be. But if what Bonnie said, like, half of, like, Canada is going to, or half of BC is going to be vaccinated by, like, July, then, yeah, it should be raised by then. I think they might be. Uh, I think it'll all depend on the numbers. We'll show if they are. But... I'm not, I really don't know one way or the other until you see the sort of the results from it. But I, I think they might be. And I think it's a really hard, hard call for um, 
the political uh, institutions to make such decisions about what's right because obviously our economy is at a disadvantage with all the restrictions. No, I think it should be faster because if you look at the numbers, the numbers are doing really well. And if you remember last year, like end of June, like the case, like the hospitalization, like, it all went down to zero for like two, maybe three months. So I think we're probably going to see the same thing happen this year. So I think, no, it's the other way around. It should be faster because the economy is struggling. Uh, lots of people are losing their job. And yeah, oh, it's not good. It's not good. That I'm really not sure about. Um, I, my understanding is in Quebec that their timeline for vaccinations is a little bit more on schedule, a little bit faster. Um, but I do think that the problem is that they're not consistent. So I think that maybe changes are being made in an inconsistent way that don't really like align well. So maybe you're opening schools, but you're not allowing people to converge. So I'm not really sure. Um, well, I think the States could have not relaxed so soon. <laughs> My family in the States, they're, uh, yeah, way too soon. Yeah, I think, um, I think there are some places where that's, that's possible. Um, I don't know. I try to listen to the, 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 the medical experts, but I think there is uh, there are strong interests competing for uh, different strategies, shall we say. I think that safety has to be everyone's number one priority, and it does feel a little bit too soon, in my opinion. There is no such thing as too soon or too late, because you, you're, you're making a bet on the, the, that, because of especially politicians, that hopefully it's the right time for relaxing and of course we don't know when the right time will be yeah definitely like with the big sports events i definitely wouldn't be comfortable going to any big like major event uh even if you had a vaccine passport i just think that's too many people many canadians with whom we've had the pleasure to speak with over the past 16 months or so about this pandemic have told us the measures they take to protect themselves wearing a mask washing their hands or even social distancing has helped to protect them not only from COVID-19, but also from catching the common cold. So when this pandemic is finally declared over, will you continue to follow the protocols put in place at the height of COVID-19? Our question. What precautions will you continue to take once the pandemic ends? Washing my hands and social distancing. Washing my hands is a good policy to follow regardless. And the social distancing will give me a comfort zone of not getting either the flu or whatever is going on. I don't know if I'll be flying again soon. You know, because I think that's one of the most dangerous things you can do right now. I think all the plexiglass is going to stay in place and all the dividers that they put in are going to stay. I don't think those are ever going to come down. I'd probably still just be like, uh, with smaller groups still, um, wear my mask everywhere until like all the numbers are really, really low. But yeah, probably keep it to that. I believe that I'll still you wear my mask indoors when shopping. Um, and I will still try to maintain distance from people, um, you know, like from people that I don't know. I'm really quite tired of masks <laughs> because they are uncomfortable. Um, you know, but having said that, I like my little face shield that I wear sometimes. I know for myself, I work as an esthetician, so I work really closely with people. So probably just like still wearing a mask while I'm at work and things like that. Well, we're going to continue to get as many inoculations, whatever comes along being offered, we're going to continue to take those. I think if I have a cold, I'll certainly consider using a mask to protect others. And I think just this whole concept of hand washing, a little bit of social, more social distancing, may be useful permanently. I think just being more uh, understood, more cognizant of of big bigger groups, uh, because even even though everyone's vaccinated, you know, is it still the the right thing to do to have you know large crowds? So, like the whole thing. The, the entire pandemic, yeah. I'll be going back to, to normal. I don't think I'll be wearing a mask unless, uh, I don't know, 
I'm at a outdoor event where there's a million people, I might wear a mask, but I don't know. You know, it's funny. I think of the last time that I was in a really big crowd just before this all hit. I don't think I'm going to do that again as, as willingly or as easily. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, I looked back at a, at a at, it was at the Glenbow. It was jam-packed with people. I mean, jam-packed. And I don't think I'm going to be doing that again. Definitely on planes, like I'm an avid traveler, so, um, and I find whenever I travel anywhere, I always get a cold from a plane, so I would definitely, I'll be taking that forward, masks on planes, um, and maybe even just in flu season in general, when I'm around people and like their, their children who are all coughing and sneezing everywhere. I think it's going to be hard to let go of wearing masks in certain public places, uh, like for the grocery store, for example, sometimes you can't help but being a little bit closer than you would like uh, to other people. So I think for a while I'll continue to wear the mask in uh, tight enclosures. I'll probably still wash my hands a lot more. It's really nice not being sick. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know, subject to, subject to medical advice, uh, I think um, Certainly hand washing is a good one, but uh, other than that, I mean, I think uh, vaccines seem to be largely effective when the numbers are there. I don't know. I'm looking forward to going back to big concerts and big shows, so uh, I'm eager to do that. But um, I think a lot of the stuff around social distancing and ma mask wearing, when it's uh, when it, we've been advised it's safe to, to uh, cease uh, doing that, that I, I would be comfortable doing that as well. But um, I know other people have certain health concerns and conditions that merit uh, maybe more uh, more serious uh, longer term measures but that's uh, I think um, for them to choose and decide. Yes probably a lot of my habits won't change if I have a significant little cough or something I'm going to be wearing a mask. Um, it might take me a little while to get used to being around large crowds but I work in the arts and culture sector and so we're really interested in having events come together again, conferences, um, people converging in museums and art galleries so I think I'll, I'll be safe. I'll probably wash my hands a lot more often every time I come home. Um, but uh, I think once they say it's over, I would trust that. I think like, for example, wearing a mask outside, I think it's a bit pushing the envelope a bit, but uh, you, need to use, you, you need to use your head, right? Common sense. Thanks for watching this episode of Outburst on the Cable Public Affairs Channel. I'm Glenn McGuinness. If you have any comments about this show or any other show, you can find us on social media. You can also find us on our website at www.cpac.ca. It's your turn to speak up, and we're listening.